Econ gang! So this is an ABAS model. We're in an inflationary gap. Does anybody have any questions? <laughs> What's up, Econ gang? This is Mr. Jager. Today we're going to be talking about interpreting real gross domestic product. That's Krugman Economics for AP Course 3rd Edition, Module 11. If you are taking an AP Econ class, Macroeconomics class, this is the perfect video for you. Or if you are taking an introductory macro class, uh, also, this would be a great video for you to, uh, to watch for interpreting real gross domestic product. Now, what does the GDP tell us? The GDP allows us to compare countries. So if we want to look to see how the United States is doing compared to, let's say, China or let's say Mexico, we can use a nominal GDP and measure that year. So if we want to just take this year that would be a great way to measure and see who's doing better, uh, who has a higher GDP, right? Now, there are some problems when you're using nominal GDP, is that sometimes price levels can manipulate the number and it's hard to tell if there's any growth throughout the years. Now, just as a side note here real quick, is that GDP, you can also see that as output, economic output and aggregate output. Now. Again, it's good for comparing, the GDP is good for comparing countries, but it's bad to see if there's economic growth, right? We have to use real GDP to, to, to measure economic growth. So by using the real GDP, you are taking out the inflation, and that way you're able to tell if there's actual growth. And here I'm gonna use an example of uh, nominal GDP. So you can see here that there's, let's say this is a country, and this country only produces shoes, hoodies, hot Cheetos. So in the year 2020, they uh, produce $1,000 or sell $1,000 worth of shoes. They sell $500 worth of hoodies. They sell $2,000 worth of hot Cheetos. And their GDP is at $3,500 for 2020, right? Great. Uh, 2021, you see that um, shoes are at $1,200. Hoodies are at $600. Uh, they sell... 2200 for hot Cheetos and the GDP is at 4,000. Now, is there actual growth is what we wanna know. And just by looking at these two numbers, you could assume that there is growth. There's 3,500 in 2020, 4,000, so there's $500 uh, worth of growth from year 2020 to 2021. However, let's look at the prices first and see if there's ec economic growth. Are we producing more? So here you can see the prices for shoes is $100, the prices for hoodies is $50, and the prices for flaming hot, uh, for hot Cheetos are uh, $2.50. So you can see that the items that are sold are 820 in 2020. Now in 2021, you can see here, 10 shoes were sold, 10 hoodies were sold, 800 Cheetos were sold. Again, 820 items were sold. So there is no growth here. The only thing that's happened is you can see that the prices have increased. So due to inflation, we're not able to interpret if there's economic growth. So what you need to use is real GDP. Now by using real GDP, you can then take the price, the inflation out, right? And able to compare from year to year to see if there's economic growth. Now. Another problem that we could run into is that some countries, they are very populated. And so it's hard to say if they are naturally have a high GDP or if they have a high GDP because they have so many people in their country. So a good way to combat this or a good way to get around this is to use GDP per, pop, uh, per capita. So, and that's very simple. You're just gonna take GDP uh, the real GDP, and you're just going to divide that by population, and that's going to give you GDP per capita. And that tells you how much per person is producing in their country, right? And so what real GDP doesn't measure? It doesn't include leisure time, volunteer, housework, and natural beauty, right? So it doesn't include all the, you know, the nice things in life, right? Um, 
but it also does include surgeries, cleanups for natural disasters. So it's maybe not the best way to indicate your standard of living, right? So for example, the GDP uh, after a natural disaster, right? Like after a hurricane happens, your GDP could increase because you have to rebuild everything, right? But your standard of living of living in a, in a city after a hurricane is not going to be very high. So uh, just kind of some of the faults with using real GDP. So that's it for me today, guys. I really want to thank you guys for listening. Uh, appreciate your guys uh, uh, hitting that like button. Uh, thank you. Have a great day and peace.